Hey there, everybody, and welcome. I know that I look weary, but I have the joy of the Lord. He's giving me this strength. We've just closed off that chapter of understanding and discovering and recuperating, reevaluating what is Christian ministry with dysfunction. And we are pro all the people that are the remnant, the many colors, the diverse people, doctrines, speaking in tongues or not. But I've never had such a concern for the future church. There, there will be one if people don't get the right doctrine and yet people don't move on with God, which is community, not our own stuff and our own turf. So I'll be putting more things out there, but I want people to know that as this human person sent in this earth suit for this time, a Christian minister chosen for some reason to be put in the earth suit of a female, a woman, I know that is a huge big deal for LPs and their LMs, the movements that are like that, the Levitical patriarchy and also the submission. I would say in hindsight, never growing up around it, never heard of that, that when I look back, and I've never met it, encountered me in African American, spirit filled or not, nobody, nobody dark skin, just my own color. So because I know the, the rigmarole, I know the justice that they want to have, you know, I'm going to just say it. So we've, you know, decades, all my life, I've thought, what in the world is some of this? And what is really good stuff? Holy Spirit as well. So the bottom line, Ephesians 5.21 was, is the first church method for everybody. Mutual submission and the fear of the Lord. Then if you're married and they're legally married and they really are understanding it, you know, God wants us to Ephesians 5.21 also in marriage mutual submission to fear of the Lord, defer to the other, respect, in a humble fear of the Lord before the Lord, God Almighty, and then Ephesians 5.22, isn't that hard? So they sign on, they, there's training, there needs to be emotional filtering and discovery and preparing and training before they legally wed, because once you legally wed, it's too late, you know. Right now I'm teaching the the, the, the persons who are the Christian ministers because people assume it's like it always has been. Uh-uh. We are out here where we have been sent to know as an embed till recently to know what the doctrines are of the people who take the doctrines on TV, media, and the local church, famous and not. So we're pro the humans that do all this, but we want to say, right now you got to say, are they really, say they're Christian, they're going to your church, they may be in your membership, but are they really legally married? And that is their choice. But it is also a giant big deal. And so I would say right now, we don't want to, we want to win people. We want to win the loss. We want to pure, you know, get people ready to say they're a Christian to meet the Lord just in case. Jesus was nailed to the cross and suffered for all of our sins and deliverances and convictions and heartaches. But we have to train it in a method that is not the old-timey law. Let's stand in the pulpit, get on our YouTube, and ream them out like they're all, you know, we're the only ones that know, or we're the ones, we're misogynist, and all women are, you know, evil and all black, you know. So we're going to say, all right, pull out of dysfunction the representation of the old-timey law mingled in with the cross. Let's keep the cross and quit the hostile accusation method. Let us have, you know, there different shades and nuances are in the vocabulary now. All right, there is authority. You want to have authority. You want to have patriarchal, matriarchal authority. Nothing wrong with being a patriarch, a matriarch, if you are not in the wrong doctrine, Levitical matriarch, critical Levitical, okay, under the law. Paul before he was Paul, was an LP, a Levitical critical. He was Saul. A Saul spirit is the same thing as the old-timey, Old Testament Saul spirit that persecuted. It's religious. You just go blind because you're a zealot. Now, next. When Paul got freedom in Christ, he met the Lord and fell in love with Him and got delivered of all his, his Torah rigidity. We like the Torah. We respect the Torah, but when you use it in the New Testament sense in the Christian ministry to club people, call them down, jump them in public, 
like I've had happen and seen TMZ video making money off of it, you know, like tabloid, all that authoritarianism, old timey up in the hills authoritarianism, Mount Williams School of Law grads, I guess. That is not the day. That that is a difference between authority, pure authority, and raising your, you know, strongly preaching. The foolishness of preaching. Billy Graham had that. That's authority, but not autocratic. So let us get into our Holy Spirit, our heads, and figure out when am I or when is somebody being an authoritarian big boss under the law to tell it, you know, all that stuff. The old timey Pharisee on the movie, you know, I saw you, I caught you. When you have the old timey law in teaching, in patriarchal, matriarchal, or the rising young are doing it too, then you notice a couple of things. There is usually a trademark, a little bit of a hint of the scowls of false doctrine, not a lot of joy, not a lot of love, all right, not merry, not mirthful. All right, we're not trying to be goofy and be mirthful, but there is a, there is a sober fear. Watch Billy Graham to a three video, okay, for a holy fear of the Lord. But then we have the difference between authoritarianism and authority, and that's what we're working on. So I've Googled, I've, I've chat GPT AI, and I've written the findings because I wanted to know because all these people are struggling with it. You know, it's an identity thing. It's how you're raised. It's how I don't want to compromise. You know, we understand why. You don't want to compromise. You don't want to be found guilty on the last day when it's too late that Jesus says, you you were licentious, you played around, you were weak and compromising. We don't want that. So we're trying to give you some food for thought. Sila, doctrinal Sila, that you can figure out between you and God when you stand before the throne on the last day. You figure it out. I'm going to tell you what I really feel needs to be said. So we Google chat GPTA in June and July of many times, and I wrote some articles on online, you know, a lot of ministry. I said, on behalf of all of us, including myself, to be objective. All right. Was the first church, Ephesians 5.21, in leadership, offices, ministry, fellowship, family, and marriage, legal marriage, and it said it was Jesus Christ, the first apostle, and that there was no one group, no one person, or no personality or type that was over all the whole churches, covering it. Covering is not in the Bible either. Prayer covering is. God's lover covers the multitudes of sin, yeah. But covering to control and keep them under submission is false in the New Testament. That is long. So I said, chat, dear chat GPT, were they all Ephesians 5.21? And it said, yes, Jesus on. And they ruled, the, they were in prayer and fasting much more than now and more humble. And they weren't divisive. Paul had said, don't say I'm for famous prophets, so-and-so, apostle, Apollos, and Paul. That was division, which we could work on now. And Paul taught community Ephesians for everyone, simply. There it is. Everyone walking it out in meekness and lowliness and long-suffering with endeavoring to keep the bonds of peace together. And then you can teach the common doctrine Ephesians 4 and have a transformed community, which is what God wants. Everyone is on the same page in the faith, but not having to look like everybody, act like, have the same exact identical call, revelation, and music, and all that. That is between you and God and everybody. All right. So then I said afterwards, all right, when did, were there authoritarians and totalitarians in the first church? And chat GPT AI said no. There were no authoritarians or totalitarians. You better do our way or we'll. All right. They were all in, everyone was in consensus through prayer and fasting in the, all, all the offices, not one style over another competing. All right. But it said that there were no authoritarians or totalitarians. That probably means turf protecting as well, personal turf protecting until later when Rome and Hellenism got in, false teaching into the world. So we got to go back and critique and not criticize every lampstand, every group, every person, yourself, myself.
because this is the end of, you know, the end of days. We want to have, what we want is to reflect the transform community, and we want to, tr we want to trans have the reflect the transform community, and we want to have the bride of Christ prepared, and we want to have, we don't want judgment down on false teaching, dysfunction, which is the second Timothy three one through five through or the first Timothy six five Pauline turn away from tragically in Christian ministry and that's why I'm trying to stir it up, really stir it up to try to really get rid of it so people will be grateful. They we're so glad they're coming to church and they'll want to go. I quit. I just had to go because Paul said to Paul said Tabo, uh, why are you tolerating such a Jezebel spirit as the head of a ministry? And I left. But he said also, Teva, why are you putting up with um, your soul, your mind, your the fatigue, the the dark occult witchcraft of false teaching in 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5, dysfunction, turn away. Now I hear an alarm. Sometimes, you know, you hear an alarm that shows an accent over what the point is. it is a prophetic sign, a red flag for this teaching. I got really, I'll be honest, I'd never been around word curse ministry in leadership. Word curse ministry that seer prophetic gone away. I think they've taken themselves to the higher level, the wrong level, and left off the cross. Because it's, if you can't go now and walk in and trust the leadership, the elders, not to read you to scan you, find fault, then never speak to you, avoid you, and make a big deal talking and warning people about what they saw. This is submission, this is cult spirit, this is dysfunction, this is Second Timothy, uh, usually playtime, big boss, and Levitical patriarch, Levitical patriarchy, matriarchy. That's why we're making a giant deal, because you know what? It's charismatic, most charismatic white. Not everywhere. Surely there's worse and more and less. There's all colors that I've never had to ever just say, I can't go now. I can't go to a charismatic church because they, they defile people. And I'm a prophet seer. You don't have to say this for their sake. They will not bring down, you know, I'm not accusing different ones or I'd name their name. But I love them. I respect them to be careful. So one of the reasons that I'm putting out a big all points bulletin for true teaching is so that I get to go as well where there's good worship. And also, I think every minister, I'm teaching cross by the unity, I've thought of this for all my life. And I always think, why can't a real head leader of a pastor of a church or an apostle go visit another kind of church, black or white? Why can't a ministry go visit and take off from their own ministry and enjoy the fruit and the uh, blessing and protecting, you know, the kind of anointing, the part of God's anointing in, of another kind, and I believe that, so I'll go, that's why I go now to fellowship with the saints when I have my own work I'm working on, and then I believe in, you know, I know the Holy Spirit, Book of Acts crowd, I know there are different levels and touches in certain minutes, there can be more of the Holy Ghost, like the joy and you know, peace and the everything. There can be the peace resting in the river. There can be the glory. There can be a lot of things, praise and worship, might and power. And I'd like all, you know, be able to know where that is so that I can take off. And one of the reasons I do get, I've been never this tired of just, because there's nowhere to go that's, you know, I can't go unless the fault. I say it in my peer group. Because it's just a bunch of potentates looking for devils not smiling so that's how you do it by the way god is bigger and we're having a good time we like this place um one of the things is we do not want competition we do not want competition this is a galatians 1 1 and 2 not it not sent out by any one group any one person i and the brothers and sisters that are with us in the field collaborating by divine appointment no members this is a apostle, a chief apostle, a teaching ministry, an organic work for everybody that loves people and knows the turf that we're not in. We have, this is like an embassy. It's no members. It's like, if you need it, it's a resource. You can have childlike faith. You can have strong, you know, it's just be yourself because God 
is amazing. God is so powerful that you can have all these different facets of Him come out in different kinds of quality groups that are mature and Bible-based. In heaven, we'll get the whole picture, but now we get a little bit through the glass darkly, and we get a taste. That's why I understand the river of God, the teaching method, different kinds of teaching, different kinds of worship are really pretty cool. If you analyze them, the more tri tribal, the more casual, the more structured, you can have liturgical, you can have hymns, you can have more uh, African and rhythmic. I really can get into that too. I really have a lot. I've got some rhythm on me, I do. But we're trying to stir it up to get the true church to come forth, the true pre preachers, teachers, and all the people who are really the real deal that know the Bible and they're out to do whatever kind of work, whether it's famous or non-famous, whether it's uh, in a church, not in a church, out in the field. And like I said, my experience has been through my life to be with people of all incomes and all situations from even around the globe that had were on the front lines of India and Africa. They came to America, a group uh, allowed me to meet them because they took, they took them in, you know, they brought the missionaries and the pastors over for eight weeks in Virginia. And I would go out there and that started my global heart. And then my grandmother and my aunt were always helping the poor or the people that were, you know, and I would think some of these people are so proud, they've forgotten how to love and that there are gifts and rewards and blessings of protection for helping those who have nothing. It says in Proverbs, excuse me, Psalm 41, I'm gonna quit because the, the brist of fellowship started kicking up over there. All right. In Psalm 41, it says the blessing of those who pity the poor, who help the poor. The blessing is that, you should read it, it is giant. You need it. Blessings of those who help the poor. Save you on your deathbed. I mean, really, good stuff. In the Old Testament, Isaiah 56, it was the organic pre first church. Blessing, a commanded blessing for keeping a Sabbath, carving out a Sabbath to go worship the Lord. And it's in Isaiah 56, verse 7. Not legalistically, you know, that was the Torah day. We understand that back in the day that was commanded by all the Jews had to go on Friday and Saturday, everything shut down. But this is the flavor, this is the precept that we can look for, the fruit of Isaiah 57 when we go and we feel, you know, to go to a Hebrews 1025 fellowshipping with the saint. Now, what I've been through, and I hear the storm clouds gathering. Anyway, I've been through a time where I've lived low and I had lived large before, but I lived low and I knew that was I was needed to live low. For my the humbling, for the abundance of the you know, many things, to to make sure I was understanding how to really depend on God like all these people around the earth. Like I said, I've dealt with people from India and Africa and third world nations before. People that I've lived with, I oversaw the Vietnamese church, spirit-filled Vietnamese for a year and a half. A pastor and I shared it after the pastor died, and I fellowship with them, and those people are amazing. I love them. They would have five families living in a house, everyone working so hard to get everybody, you know, provided for, and I just love it. So I've been with the grassroots, and it's my life. I really enjoy it, but I can go mega. I can go casual. But right now we're just sort of opening up the online fellowship.us as a resource, prophetic, and also a statement. If you look through the doctrines of the last year, or really the last 12, it's, it's eight years old. And some of the doctrines are way down deep. Some of the teachings, Eli, Templi Priesthood, the, the Compassion Fatigue, Eli, back in the 2000, right when it started, and also other blogs. But online fellowship this past few months has been meaty. God has just downloaded um, the TMZ series about TMZ attack Christian ministry, tabloids, making money off of calling people prosperity, <laughs> that type of thing. What is the fruit? What is the fruit? Transform lives? Anyway, part two, I think, in part, some of those are really meaty and they give some good de detail. There's also the submission doctrine, like I was just teaching, who's over whom? Is it really in the Bible? And do we have to, you know, all that stuff. There's a, I, a AI, are you, submission, are you submitted? 
and then there is the one on TMZ video, and then there's the one now uh, about the witch watchers. I heard the witch watcher call my name, trying to discern false teaching when you go into a charismatic or any kind of ministry, Holy Ghost ministry. Hey, we're not angry. Let me say this, we're fed up. We're fed up, that's all. Like Jesus with zeal for the Father's house. Now you can hear the, but also I've been through really big fiery furnaces and God has kept me and preserved me and kept me with joy, kept me feeling young, kept me safe, provided in miracle famine. So when you're in that situation and you know it and you want to get prayer or talk, I am here because this is why I had to live. One of the reasons if you live long, you can see a perspective of all this that's going on in the world, which I have. But you can see if the doctrines that you heard early on worked, and they do. And I call it abiding faith, mixed with Billy Graham, you know, but the cross and everything, and the whole love and everything like that, serving and everything, being diverse. But if you have miracle, you are in a very bad situation, in health and finances, listen. God has protected me, and He has taught me the value of knowing the faith movement, but not making it a big giant about your money. If but you need money, and he, we'll talk about it later. But I thought abiding faith, and that's why I had to know how powerful it is when you are dependent on God in any nation, anywhere, by yourself, in the suburbs, in the urban community, up in Philadelphia, on the street. Listen, you got to know God right now. That's what we're here for, to encourage you. God is good. His mercy endures. His mercy endured to all of us. Me. The last part I would say is the big deal to never stop forgiving. Worship, learn, grow, and always make sure you've forgiven everybody and yourself. But the other thing is sometimes the reason I have to say it so often with the whelp and the whelm and this stock, false stock. It is. It never stops. If they quit it, once they stop the dysfunction, I won't talk about it. I won't need to because God will have worked so that it's smooth when all these people He wants to be able to go to their churches are safe now. They won't be biased against, targeted with dysfunction. God is good. We want to keep it the good news. The good news, that's what we want. That's what the gospel means, the good news. Trustworthy, not violent, not gossip, but trustworthy and good. God bless you. Bye-bye.